starting with Tom. Right. I'm going to borrow uh, Anthony's question, what does should mean? Because what we've been discussing is how the patent system should work <coughs> in its application to the, um, to the biosciences. And I suppose it was a phrase that, that Greg used, you alluded to the hidden hand. And maybe it should work as a kind of hidden hand that uh, encourages innovations and brings public good so to speak, uh, along with that. But what we've also seen in, from the talks is a good deal of skepticism about whether that's the way it works at the moment. And one of the things that I've, I've been really interested in, in hearing about is the way in which some of the professional communities have reacted to what they seem they perceive to be the unsatisfactory features of the current system to set up open sourcing or Bronwyn's sort of trademark approach. In other words, to in a sense to find ways of dealing with some of the well, addressing the public good goals of the patent system, but avoiding what they perceive to be its, its defects. And in a way, I guess the challenge for, for those of you who, unlike me, uh, have some professional commitment to working with the patent system is to, in a sense, respond to those skeptics and to say, well, actually, we can reform the system to make it, to, to, to deal with your problems um, and yet equally deliver the public goods that the system is supposed to, to deal with. So, um, look, I come, I'm, as, I, as, as Greg said, I'm a professor of philosophy, I teach political philosophy quite a bit, so for me, ethical and political concerns are very central to my interest in this area. And I do think of the patent system as essentially a normative scheme. Uh, but it's a normative scheme whose application to the biological sciences doesn't, well, it seems to many people to be a good deal less than ideal. So at the moment, it is not working the way it should be. Quite how one then alleviates these difficulties is, I take it, the, in a sense, the task of the meetings of this kind. Uh, and I certainly don't have a lad in his lamp that produces the solutions. But uh, certainly my, my thinking about these matters has been hugely advanced by, by what I've heard today. Now, I can go on further. Okay. okay. I mean, one suggestion that, that Rebecca came alluded to just a, a minute or two back is to, is to say that, look, we have here a legal system in which uh, the attempt is to be all things to all men, to have some one set of patent rules or patent uh, institutions that apply across the board. Now, of course, there are different models here, and in fact, in Europe, as we've heard earlier, there's the UPOP system for plant varieties, by and large, uh, but that has, I think, no straightforward analog in the United States of America. Um, on the whole, it, I mean, Rebecca's suggestion was that uh, it would be better if patent jurisdictions could, in a sense, agree to divide and rule and to be much more specialist in their applications and thereby sidestep some of the difficulties that seem to come with, with using technological models that are appropriate in one domain, but inappropriate in another. So that, to me, that seems to me a very productive way forward. Um, but as, as in a way I, I'm raising the question, I'm not quite sure who would have the authority to make these decisions? I mean, would it be some big international convention, or would it be powerful legislatures like the US Congress, or, or whatever? And one of the things that then, from a political point of view, interests me is, and it came up in connection with the European Patent Office, you know, quite who's in charge here? In fact, I think, the, if you like, the politics of patents. Uh, steps well outside traditional political philosophy of the sovereign state. Um, patent 
law, as we, we, we know, is international. And for that very reason, it's, <coughs> it's not clear both who's in charge, but equally it's not clear how you might change things and change things radically. Thank you very much.